This is a censored Looks Live bite size clip from the full uncensored Looks Live live stream. The full uncensored Looks Live live stream will be uploaded soon. Patrons will get access to it sooner. For now, enjoy the clip. Without further ado, let's just get straight into it. We have Bulldog Mindset. Uh, Bulldog Mindset, do you want to uh, um, let us know how you found out about this channel, how you found out about the Black Pill, and kind of sum up your your thoughts on the Black Pill? Yeah, sure. So I'm trying to think how I originally found out about about this stuff. I, a, a lot of what, what mm-hmm. I've done, what I do is is personal development. So I've definitely you know, focus on content around that. I get a lot of emails from guys with, uh, with questions about women, with about dating, with about looks and, and all of these things. And so, you know, from, from doing, from answering those questions on my channel, I ended up, uh, you know, doing a lot of research into, into solving some of these problems. Some of them really, what really led me down the path was, uh, you know, Rollo Tomasi's uh, rational male uh, reading that and, and you know just uh, kind of discovering you know the the kind of content that's based around that right so from there you know looking at MGTOW stuff and then recently probably in the last uh, few few months I'd say that I, I started seeing more black pill type of stuff and so I started really doing some research into this pretty much looking at all the channels and, and videos on the topic and and yeah so I you know that's how I found uh, found your channel how I, I found this and and what i've what i've kind of you know my basic views on it is that i think there's again it's the same thing i think what what we're seeing a lot here today especially on youtube and, and on the internet is is a lot of echo chambers and what i mean by that is that there's a lot of truth to like uh for example like ronald tomasi's book right the rational mail which is really where the red pill idea really came from it's great. It's got a lot of real truth to it, but when you look at you know what what kind of spun off of there, and you look at like the MGTOW type of movement, uh, you see a lot of of things that are just sort of repeated over and over again that aren't aren't verified. There's a there's a lack of critical thinking, and so I, I think we're, we're seeing a lot of that. I think there's a lot of fundamental truths in in what MGTOW, MGTOW guys say, and also what Black Pill uh, you know says, but yeah. there, that's not the whole picture. I think where me and you are more alike than you would think. Um, I don't agree with like the black pill a hundred percent i'm like 99 percent um a believer um i believe that there are there is room for outliers there is room for you know that rare woman who doesn't um adhere to the you know the the standard kind of woman personality woman line of thinking what a, a standard woman is attracted to but it's so rare that you may as well just consider it a hundred percent um let me go to harvey next harvey um how did you hear about this channel what do you consider what do you think about the black pill i'm a strong proud black pillar boy i uh <laughs> okay my, um i walk my brother was watching one of your videos like i actually remember the exact moment um that you were showing the picture of the one guy that looked a lot like uh, what i can't remember the actor's name the guy who plays is thor and the other guy on the left you were like which one of these guys do you um one of these men has anxiety problems health issues things like that but which is it so that's the part where i walked in at and i i thought those you know it's kind of interesting and by the time i watched the rest of the video, my brother was there watching it. I was converted. But as soon as I heard your video, I uh, that pretty much just all got uh, blown away. Okay. I mean, I think that all those I think that all those behaviors are perfectly legitimate, but you've got to have the looks, boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. That, that yeah. that's a pretty good compelling argument from my case, just yeah. right there. Right. I mean. Yeah. It, it's pretty obvious, like, I, I'm not, I don't mean to insult you, my man, but it's pretty obvious that you haven't applied this and in, in practice this in your life. Like, you, you're very, um, 
uh, like even in the comments, just look in the chat right now, and, and yeah. you can see kind of the the, the cringe. Yeah, comments. I don't I don't mean to be rude, but um, yeah, you are coming across like a bit like I'm not one to judge because I've done my fair share of cringe. I wouldn't say that your personality is neurotypical. Don't be offended, but uh, just take it the way I intend it. It's you come across not as um, you don't come across as neurotypical to me. Not not grounded is yeah. what I would say. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I know that. Perfect. I mean, my my childhood was a train wreck, so I'm very well aware of that. Okay. Um, I don't mean to be uh, rude, <laughs> but um, I kind of don't Go ahead. kind of um, I don't feel this. <laughs> This is going to sound bad, but um, I feel like uh, you should be more of a caller to the stream than a guest because I don't th feel like the dynamics are right. I don't feel like you're in the right f mindset to be on a stream like for two hours. I don't. I'm sorry if that's offensive. Or oh, I've got a lot yeah. of thought. Well, that's um, all right. I, I have a lot of thoughts. I like to share a lot of perspectives. Um, could because I can't. I would could, say that I come from like the. Oh, go ahead. Uh, could um, I have you as a caller? Would you be offended if I uh, dump you now and um, have you call in maybe like in about an hour and a half when um, and just give your overall opinion on things because I just don't feel the the dynamic is right. Yeah. No offense. That's yeah. fine. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm gonna dump you, but you can call in in about half an hour and give you like sum up your um, thoughts on um what we've talked about okay all right all right thanks all right so all right thanks so uh let's do that and um l let's not um have him leave without um you know saluting him <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, i'm sorry um, <laughs> i'm sorry but um my, yeah, because th this goes to this goes to my point. Um, I'm trying to advocate for the fact that looks are what are holding people uh, are holding a lot of men back, and right. to have him on stream, who <laughs> and he obviously has like a some personality issues going on. He obviously obviously has some kind of um. I don't want to say Asperger's, but there, there is some kind of social it, disconnect there, uh, you know, socially uncalibrated or whatever you want to call it, that yeah. it, it would cloud the stream because people will p look at the stream and say, well, look at this guy's personality. Obviously, um, that's the problem. And I want people to focus yeah. on the looks aspect. So I really yeah. I'm sorry, um, Harvey, I do appreciate you, you know, wanting to be on the stream and that kind of thing. And as I said, call in in about an hour and a half and give your overall opinion on things but um um i don't feel like the chemistry was right there i'm yeah sorry about, like, about that um yeah it's 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 like pitching me a softball there yeah like, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah exactly fair. yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right let's actually get into this um what did you, this i'm um, some of what you see may be re repeated from last week but i want your opinion on it how okay. we have um there was an article from the Washington Post that said 28% of men are now um, did or didn't didn't have snuggles in the last year. And um, first, first of all, I would say that that is very conservative because, you know, mm -hmm. men don't want to acknowledge their lack of, you know, um, snuggling prowess and uh, m men are men judge themselves by how much intimacy they can get so 28 percent, i think is conservative i think I'll, i think it's probably near 35 or something and don't oh, forget i, I, I don't, bet it's higher than that I bet it's yeah exactly 50. and don't forget that um uh, a lot of the men who actually do get intimacy may only be getting that intimacy with um women who are like you know 200 pounds ignore me i'm stupid i meant to say 300 pounds or you know disgusting in some way so it's even worse than that chart on screen um is depicting so yep. what do you attribute 
the rise in um, intimacy lessness. I'll say it like that because of the YouTube sensor. Um, what do you attribute the in, the the rise in intimacy lessness in men? What do you attribute it to? So yeah, so I agree with you actually that, and I think it's I think the number is actually higher than 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 that. I think it's closer to fifty percent, if not more, mm. right? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of underreporting here because I, I hear a lot of braggadocious stories that are, are completely untrue of guys that are completely not getting laid that are, are pretending to be getting laid. So if this is self-reported. I mean, it's probably much much higher. Mm. And just in in general observation and coaching guys and, and seeing guys out and and going out, I'm not seeing anyone ever get laid like you see what i'm saying it's like it's mm. very very rare so so but but here's the thing so so why is this rising so much you know why this disparity well if you you know if you look historically the, these numbers are not like completely out of line right i, I was I just i think so, yeah. in, the, hmm. in the last stream i'd brought up an article where it was like it was something like for every eight, 18 women that made and reproduce one man did this was like six or seven thousand years ago like historically but but i think what we're seeing now today more so is is i think there's a lot of truth to actually the the idea some of the black pill ideas of the idea that women are becoming more picky right Mm. Uh, and then and then men are also uh, but but i think that's it's combined with men also lacking the the social skills like i think it's always been true mm. historically in society and biologically that women will always prefer and will only really mate with the top 20% of of men uh, but i think it's becoming in even more skewed where it's going to 10% maybe closer to 5% i, I think that is true mm. but but at the at the same time, it's also never been easier to be in the top ten percent of men because you know no offense to uh, you know the last caller, but yeah. it, it it doesn't you know there there's so much so many the bar is set so low right you know what? the you bar know. sets so low to be a Chad are you saying? Well, okay, again, this is based on just just if you're just basing it on looks, right? If yeah. I go out and I go to to a nightclub. I see. In fact, I was just in LA like uh, like three days ago, and I was at this 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 seventies bar there, and I and I watched. You know, I observed for for a bit before I started doing anything, and, and I saw all these guys just standing around, just holding their drinks, just talking to guys, and mm-hmm. I saw you know at least you know ten fifteen girls that were 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 really good looking that that these guys could be talking to. None of them were talking to. All right, I was going in there and I was like introducing people to to other people and 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 starting conversations and and I just realized I was like, well, if you were just in here and you like just had an ounce of balls, you could just clean up in here because there's everyone is all these guys are just standing around, uh, you know, because they're afraid, right? Yeah, so, but I, you, um, it, what I've what the trend now is mm-hmm. that women can access the guys that they want to. Um, be intimate with or di- or date on tinder so now nightclubs for women are more of a uh, social gathering to come to you know, socialize with the people they came with you have to actually be better than the women the men that they can access on tinder for them to give you a chance so i get why a lot of men are now hesitant to approach women in a nightclub because you I guess there is some aspect of you showing your personality and maybe your height or in your frame in person that you can't do on Tinder so much. But you really have to be so much better than the hundreds of guys that women have access to to approach a woman in a, in a nightclub. So um, don't you think that's a factor? I, so so I think it's a factor, but I, I think that the factor is so, – so here's one thing to consider, right? Mm. So I've talked to a lot of girls that – that have said that uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even use Tinder, right? That, and I've talked to them in, in nightclubs uh, or bars. Okay, I've talked to 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 uh, to girls that that have said that they never go to nightclubs or never go to bars, right? They're, you're only going to find them in Starbucks, right? You know, you know what I'm yeah. saying, like our, our yoga class. And so there are definitely different social circles and different activities that that women, you know, partake in. So. So to say that that they're like to, it's a false assumption to think that they're all using Tinder and and that's and that's the only thing that they're going off of and and plus the the other thing behind it too is that I, I can tell you from personal experience and also from uh, from a lot of the guys that that I've worked with mm. that 
women do appreciate a man that actually has the balls to speak to them in person. The, the Tinder conversations Not and whatnot. Not so much. Lately, um, it's a growing trend that women find it an insult that um, a man that they consider below them in looks approaches to them. You do get the odd woman that finds it flattering and she'll be like, oh, that's not because I've had it. I've approached a woman um, in when I was doing PUA. I pick mm -hmm. up art. I approached a woman and um, she was like, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so nice. Um, feel free to visit me anytime. And it was like <laughs> fla flattering. And she's come into my because yeah. it was I approached her. I approached her while she was working in a store. So she was like, feel free to come in. Basically, feel free to come and make her more sales or whatever. But, sure. but she was she was nice with it. But, but on the whole, yeah. women don't like to be a because what it what does it say to a woman if you have some uh, balding, um, long mid face, long horsed face, flat cheekbones, chinless guy approaching you? What does it say about you? It says that this man thinks he's on your looks level and women find it an insult. So, um, well, okay. Yeah. A couple of things here. There's a couple of things here. I mean, first of all, the, the, it, you, in general, that's, you're, you're making a lot of assumptions about, about how women view things. And I how, no, how, no, how, no. At, at these are not assumptions. Before. Women have said this. Women have said this online where, uh, they, where they have anonymity to uh, be more yeah. open. They've said that, uh, I covered, um, an article in I think it was War Two, I think it was Brie Larson that said that a security or T oh yeah TSO I saw that. officer yeah. or something I can't remember uh, it's uh, an officer at, um, I'll get to the live chats after um, an officer approached her and um, you can guess that he didn't look like Ian Somerhalder. Well, okay, there's a couple of things here though. I mean, I mean, well, okay, so just just to hit that first the brie larson thing right i mean she's an, a known feminist right and she's she's ca cause she's also an attention whore. Yeah. and you know probably the the rationality behind posting that was just to say oh look at me and look at yeah, guys that some are of that, like yeah, yeah i get that yeah. right there's some of that now but but in general okay this is the thing i, I would say is that in general is that there's there's ways to approach that are direct and there's indirect and 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 it is going to depend on your looks, but women are not going to necessarily evaluate a guy completely on his looks. So oh, so if okay. if really? you, no, this is this is definitely this is you know how is, long it takes to evaluate it, looks. It's not even a conscious thing. You just you uh, babies do it. Babies. Uh, it, no no no. Okay, here here's 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 why I would say this is not well. Okay, let me get let me finish this point and then okay. and then we can come back to that. But but essentially you can you can come up with a very direct approach. And if you use a direct approach, so mm -hmm. let's say that you, you see a, a beautiful looking woman and you say, Hey, uh, you're very attractive. I'd like to get to know you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y you know, now most, again, to just say it like that with just very casual is going to give you a higher chance. Okay. Because you're not putting so much into it. Right. Which most guys that are trying direct approaches, I guarantee you, they're not just coming up and seeing it smoothly like that. There's a lot more behind it. Okay. So there's a lot more that's being read there, but let's say that you can do that. Mm. When you do that direct kind of approach, you are forcing an evaluation at that point because yeah. you're making your interest known. You're also putting yourself in a lesser position, but let's 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 assume that most women already assume that the reason why you're talking to them is because you find them attractive. But yeah. what happens is now you force you force the decision. Now she has to kind of make the split second decision in her head. She say, "Is this guy attractive? Do do I do I want to be talking to this guy or not?" Because if she continues the conversation after you've said something like mm. that, she's indicating interest. Now. Now, if you go with a more indirect approach, yep. just, you know, and I'm sure you've heard of all the things like mm. observational approach or even just to say, make a joke or just say, hey, you know, you know what? I, I just I just saw I saw you standing over there. You look like you're like you're you're angry today. What's up? Mm. You know, or, or just something like that. Very casual. Right. That where you're not. Then she could actually prosper possibly uh, evaluate you on more than just the immediate attractiveness. She could decide if she's attracted to you. And, and the reason why I say this, again, you know, coming back to what, what I said we'd get back to, is, is the idea that, you know, if you just take a picture of someone mm. and, and you look at them, you can evaluate their attractiveness from that picture. But I'm sure you've experienced it as well, where you meet a person in person 
And there's just something about him, right? It, it's like, you know this, like, maybe, you know, let's say for, as men, right? We mm-hmm. see a woman and we're like, ah, there's, she's just attractive for some reason. And, and she's not like the supermodel, like, you know, Barbie doll attractive. She's more like this girl next door. But there's something about just the way she, she talks and, and that she's bubbly or whatever it is that just gets your engine going. And you know she's not really the most attractive girl you've ever seen. But for some reason, she's more attractive than girls that would be more more aesthetically attractive. The same, if that is happening for, for men who yeah. are mostly visual, you know that is happening for women, absolutely. Uh, and so so that's why I say that, like, it really does depend. Now, again, if you just, if any woman can look at pictures of guys and say, yeah, this guy is more physically attractive than another one. Mm. But that does not determine that, that is not the only thing which, which you are the only scope in which she determines whether or not she's attracted to a guy. Attraction is not a choice. It is something that yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That, that's, that's what we, we believe in the black pill community. Attraction is not a choice. And so when you approach a woman, she is, eva- she is evaluating you. Maybe not as, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Abruptly, if you do an indirect approach, maybe the mm. she's not making a split second snap judgment on your looks but if you're if you approach a woman in a in an indirect way she's still evaluating your looks there is still um either a halo effect that your face causes or a negative halo effect i call it the phalo effect so (laughs) yeah so and just to go back to this um chart um how do you how do you account for men's if you think that some of the um, the cause of the rise in male mm-hmm. virginity is due to men becoming more withdrawn, you know, um, basement dwelling, why did it suddenly start in 2008? Why did it start around the time that um, dating apps ro- uh, came to the fore? Exactly, because because it's such a crutch. It's such a and and it's it's the worst kind of crutch because it doesn't actually help you. It's like it's like a broken crutch. It's like trying to it's like having a broken leg and trying to walk around with a crutch that's like uh, two sizes too small for you, right? Wait, and that's wait, what wait. so the many men are is, doing. Wait, wait, men have which who has the okay. Crutch? The crutch is the dating app because it what? it allows you. It allows to, women. Is you you're saying no, are you no, saying no. it's a crutch for women? It allows women? men. Oh, it, okay. no, no, no. It's a cope for men. Okay, no, this no, is no, no, no. Oh, there, yes. there are articles. There are articles that say that um the uh, the rise in male depression is due to getting no matches on um Tinder. I agree. And Badoo. It's men who are um, suffering or disadvantaged in the face of apps. So it's not a crutch for men. Hear me out. We're saying the same thing, but here's what I'm saying. This is why I'm saying it's a crutch, okay? And that's why I said it's a bad crutch. It's a horrible crutch, okay? Because the thing is, all right, if you can utilize a dating app, if you don't have to go out into the real world, just like porn is a crutch, right? It's it's a similar type of thing. It's like you can now go online and this is how we meet women is Tinder, right? And this yeah. is the first thing, like, when well, I talk well, to guys... Um, like, to an extent, hold on, hold on. how we meet men. We, well, a lot well, of men can't meet most, women. But, I, yeah, well, let me this, finish. Yeah, yeah. This is what most most men think today, is if you were to ask the average guy off the street and said, how do, how, do you, how do you meet women, or how do you go on a date, how do you find a date, they would say Tinder, yeah. right? And, and that's, that's such, <laughs> it's such a wrong answer. <laughs> It, hmm. it that's see that was it was so destructive to men when the dating apps came out for for multiple it, it just on multiple accounts one of them is because it made us weak and made us put <laughs> so that we said okay well i can just swipe online and i can find girls okay online and that prevented us from going out and actually into the real world and developing social skills and meeting girls okay and and second it's so it's so uh, detrimental to your ego because if you're not in the top five or ten percent, you're not going to get shit on Tinder. I mean, you, it's like it'll be worthless. It'll be the worst crutch ever because it doesn't actually work. So, so it, it had a double a double whammy effect on 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 men and the male the fragile male ego in this case, right? Because we said we're uh, every now now more guys think they're ugly when they're not okay and they don't have the social skills to actually go out and disprove that so 
so you know it, it's almost like if you believe that the only way to find women is to go through a stupid dating app oh man you're you're just you're just screwed like w- what are you going to do <laughs> and and that's that's exactly what's happened here and that explains the chart and i think we're in pretty much agreement on, on most of those, those points the the thing is that what differentiates i think i'd, I'd say from me and you in, in most of your audience mm-hmm. uh, for, for the most part is that i have gone out there and I have been on both sides of the spectrum. Okay, I've I've been pretty much uh, the the you know the ugly fat nerdy dude, and I have I have been you know the I've 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 been a model. Okay, mm. and I have worked with guys on all of the spectrum, and I have seen I have seen me in the very best you know that that I've been, uh, and and just bombing out like hor like horribly bad, right? Mm. And I have had tremendous results like r- ridiculous results when when i had just learned a little bit of of what i was missing right and 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 i, I don't want to i don't want to minimize it. it's not like a little bit this is what i say about like when, when people say that that game doesn't work okay because you know i i've i've thousands of reference experiences telling you that game does work but but this no. is what i would say about this okay okay is that this it's like this so so think of like getting attraction from a woman right or getting a woman to sleep with you as as a chasm okay mm-hmm. okay now some chasms are larger than other chasms okay mm-hmm. but but there's a but all chasms are roughly at least a, a certain depth let, let's say or a certain width let's say okay mm-hmm. now if you can jump 60 percent across a chasm it's worthless you still fall in yeah. okay you have to be the only way that jumping across a chasm, the skill of jumping across a chasm is good is if you can jump 100% across it, okay? Mm. If, if you follow what I'm saying. So what I'm saying here is that a lot of guys learn game and they get 60% good at game. And it, and they still fall in the pit. They get nothing. They get zero, zero results, nothing, okay? Mm. And they try it for years and, and they get they get nothing, okay? But once a person reaches a point where they can jump across most chasms, Okay. They mm-hmm. start, all of a sudden they go from zero results to a ridiculous amount of results, and that's that's how it works, and that's why so many people believe that game doesn't work. And and I understand the mentality and the psychology of it, and I I had gone through it myself. But had I not learned to jump the chasm and taught other guys to jump the chasm, I would believe the same thing. But the things that I've seen, the things that I've done, prove otherwise. And the only thing that's changed, right? My my looks didn't change. What's changed is my understanding and my uh, ability to apply, you know, th- what you would call game. But really, it's it's a lot of it is social calibration. Okay, wow, a lot of things I want to uh, back up um, and address. Um, there is this implication that your game needs to be perfect in order to get a girlfriend, and if if you don't get a girlfriend, it's because your game isn't good enough, and you need to buy another RSD, you know, blueprint. 10 CD course, or you need to go on another boot camp. Why can't we? I, there, if you saw last week's stream, I, I did. I referred to g- bad game. There is such thing as bad game and not knowing how mm-hmm. to speak to women and um, having bad social skills and being boring. But at the same time, there is this implication, especially from your side of the um, debate, mm-hmm. uh, from the kind of red pill pickup art side that your game needs to be perfect and if you're if you don't get a girlfriend it's because your game you need to work on your game how about we acknowledge that your game maybe only needs to be about 60 percent good but then your face is the rest Uh, she says the title is i don't find my boyfriend attractive so this goes out to all the uh blue pillars or red pillars that think that oh i i i see so many ugly guys with decent looking girlfriends therefore looks don't matter okay i moved back home with my parents okay oh that's cute (sighs) she said oh that's cute i moved back home with with my parents oh that's cute that's that's not the reaction you want actually that this is hitting worse than i would expect i would think that they would think he's joking and be be uh going along but you can look at her face now and you can tell that he's losing attraction now for sure so what with that big smile on her face 